Hello, this is the Sunday School lesson for January 17th, 2021. The title of today's lesson, Created for a Purpose. The main point of today's lesson, God values each of us and created us for a purpose. Every human life is precious to God. None of us are here by accident. God has a plan. We're not always able to understand everything about life and why we're here or why other people might be here, why certain things happen to some people. But we know that each and every life matters and is precious to God. Today we're going to look at some portions of the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1. Now we know that Jeremiah prophesied during the last days of the kingdom of Judah in the 7th century BC. We know that he witnessed the revival led by Josiah, the last good king of Judah. But then after his death, Judah once again turned to pagan worship. He was called a weeping prophet because he lamented the condition of Judah. He was a disciple of the prophet Zephaniah, who also has a book in the Bible. Zephaniah was considered by many in his day to be a prophet of doom. Jeremiah was related to Huldah, the prophetess who also looked after the king's wardrobe, and she was more highly respected than any of the men who were prophesying at that time. Josiah came to her for the truth. And we know that Jeremiah was financially secure. As far as we know, he never actually had to have a, a real nine-to-five job. He uh, always seemed to have money. He was able to buy property. But that didn't bring him much comfort. He was called as a young man in his 20s. Uh, that was still considered little more than a child back in those days. He never married because the Lord told him that because of the work he would be doing that he should not marry. And it was very unpopular. His message was very unpopular because at a time when many people wanted to look for a way to escape God's judgment, he told them it was inevitable. Now, this is a literal translation from the Hebrew into English, Jeremiah 1, five. It begins, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I sanctified you, meaning that he set him apart, separated him for a purpose. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So from reading scripture, we determine that God is the creator of life, that life is a miracle, and that life is sacred. Life begins in the mind of God. He knows us and has a plan for us even before we arrive. And then in physical terms, life begins in the womb and is sacred there, just as at any stage of life, life is sacred. At every stage of life, God has a purpose for you. From the womb, childhood, adulthood, old age, any stage of life, God has a purpose. You have meaning and you are loved. When the Lord called Jeremiah, he put forth three excuses for why he didn't think he was adequate for the job. First was his youthfulness, calling himself like a child or merely a youth. And then he said he had no good ability to speak, didn't know how to speak. And the Lord also looked at his heart and saw that there was fear and the Lord said that you will go where I send you. You will speak whatever I tell you. And do not be afraid of anyone, for I will be with you. 
This is the Lord's declaration. So at every stage of life, and in any set of circumstances, the Lord can use us if we'll just yield ourselves to him, be submissive to his will. So the Lord touched the mouth of Jeremiah and said, See, I have now filled your mouth with my words. And he told him what his appointment was. that He gave him power to overcome any situation. Whatever powerful person he might encounter, whatever circumstances, he would give him power. Just as God had touched the mouth of Isaiah, just as Jesus told the people that they needed to tear in Jerusalem, that a great power would come upon them to be witnesses to the whole world, that power is still available to people of all ages. No one is useless or worthless or expendable in the kingdom of God. You are his. So seek God's face. Ask him what you can do. Make yourself available. Find out what you can do for his kingdom. Totally surrender to God. Put yourself totally in his hands. Trust him that he will empower you to do what he has called you to do. Trust him and obey. Trust the power of the Holy Spirit. Finally, be the support that somebody needs. Be the encourager that somebody needs. Look around and if there's somebody who's kind of been forgotten or overlooked, then find a practical way to help them, to make them feel special. Let them know that they are valued by you and by God. For our benediction today, I'm going to read one of the prayers of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console. Seek not to be understood as to understand. Not to be loved, but to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey.